The Russian army loses one soldier for every 2.5 square meters of occupied Ukrainian territory. This was stated by the deputy head of the Ukrainian mission to the OSCE, Natalia Kostenko, at a meeting of the OSCE Forum for Security Cooperation. The Russian military leadership relies heavily on cannon fodder tactics, demonstrating that it can only achieve progress at a cost that any other country would find unacceptable. It has been calculated that every 2.5 square meters of Russian advance in Ukraine costs the Russian occupiers the life of one soldier, Kostenko said. In particular, Kostenko noted that the Ugladar campaign speaks most eloquently about the enemy's meat tactics. The occupiers captured the city after hundreds of daily attempts to break through the Ukrainian defense. Russian propaganda has already declared this a strategic victory, but in reality, the occupiers had been moving towards this for two years with a predominant amount of manpower, artillery and aviation. Instead, they captured ruins. The Ukrainian military continues to identify and destroy military headquarters of the Russian occupation forces, logistics and communication routes and ammunition depots. In particular, last week, our troops successfully destroyed the command posts of the 35th and 27th Motorized Rifle Brigades, as well as the command post of the 2nd Combined Arms Army of the Russian Federation, she concluded. In September, Russia suffered the heaviest losses on the front since the start of the full-scale invasion, with average daily losses exceeding 1,000 soldiers. The Telegraph reports, British military intelligence stated that September was the deadliest month for the Russian army since the start of the war in Ukraine, as reported on Monday. The average level of losses for the Russian army rose to 1,271 soldiers killed or seriously wounded per day. Previously, the highest daily loss rate among Russian soldiers was in May, with an average of 1,262 military personnel killed or injured. Moreover, September marked the fifth consecutive month in which Russian losses exceeded 1,000 soldiers per day. Analysts suggest that the high level of casualties is linked to the Russian tactic of mass infantry assaults, which often involves meat wave attacks, where a large number of troops are sent to storm Ukrainian defense positions. The UK Ministry of Defense reported that Russia has lost nearly 650,000 soldiers since the invasion began in February 2022. Its losses averaged between 172 and 559 soldiers per day in 2022, peaking at 967 in 2023. Ukraine has expressed growing concerns over Russia's efforts to extend its sphere of influence through the deployment of the African Corps and allied Russian private military companies in several African nations. The Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs announced this. Russian mercenaries inflict an irreparable damage to the stability and security of the African countries, fuel internal spats and conflicts, cause an increase in human losses. They are engaged in illegal mining and expropriation of valuable minerals of these countries to finance the aggressive war of the Russian Federation against Ukraine, the statement said. Ukrainian diplomats state that immigrants from Africa and the Middle East who are being fraudulently or coercively sent by Russia to fight against the Ukrainian people regularly fall into Ukrainian captivity. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs appealed to such foreigners to avoid joining the Russian army by all means and, if sent to the front, to use the I Want to Live project at the earliest opportunity to voluntarily surrender their weapons to the Ukrainian Defense Forces and save their lives. We strongly condemn the Russian Federation's cynical use of African and Arab citizens as mercenaries who are utilized mercilessly by the Kremlin regime as cannon fodder in battles against the defense forces of Ukraine on the territory of our state. Ukraine's Ministry of Foreign Affairs emphasized calling on the governments of friendly countries in Africa and the Middle East to publicly condemn such actions by Russia and take all possible measures to stop this criminal practice. According to the universally recognized norms and principles of international law and the UN Charter, Ukraine is a victim of illegal, unprovoked and unjustified armed aggression by Russia. The Foreign Ministry emphasized, therefore, it is the international duty of all states that respect the principles and goals of the UN Charter to help protect the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine within its internationally recognized borders.
only through unity and strength the world can give a worthy rebuff to the aggressors and invaders wherever they are, the Ukrainian diplomat summarized. The Ukrainian armed forces have a plan to destroy the Crimean bridge at the most painful moment for the Russian occupiers. This was stated on the air of Radio NV by Captain First Rank, Deputy Chief of Staff of the Ukrainian Naval Forces in 2004 to 2020, Andriy Rizenko. I think that the Defense Forces have a plan to neutralize this facility as a logistical supply route at the most painful moment for the enemy. The moment when fire control is established or the supply through the Azov region where 75% of the cargo is delivered in the interests of Crimea and the group of Russian occupation forces in the south of Ukraine is blocked in some way. Rizenko said, he emphasized that the Crimean bridge is very important for Russians as it has strategic and ideological significance and damaging this bridge affects Russian President Vladimir Putin personally. This is why they are strengthening it so powerfully, its defense. Now this defense is much more powerful. Indeed, there is an S-400 system there. There are panziers that protect it from the air, Rizenko noted. He explained that in order to protect the Crimean bridge from Ukrainian sea drones, the Russians began to build an iron fence in the Kirsch Strait, which is more than 16 kilometers long, and there are barrier barges on the surface of the water. In fact, 500 meters remain free. This is the shipping part of the canal. Everything else is closed with structures. And indeed, they are actually fixed to the seabed so that underwater drones cannot pass. They are forced to do this because they analyze the threat and really do not want us to attack this bridge, the expert said. In addition, Rizenko explained why the Russians sent warships to sea. I understand that this is primarily due to the fact that the enemy may have had some information that some strike actions are being prepared against these ships. Of course, they are dedicated to October the 8th of 2022. They remember that two years ago, there was an attack on the Crimean Bridge. First of all, I simply associate this with security issues. Rizenko said, 